Welcome to NTV. I'm Sharon Bennett. And I'm Terry Kakita. We're reporting to you from the Museum of Flight, a participant in City Light's Energy Smart Design, one of our conservation programs. The museum, built in 1987, has had energy efficient improvements in lighting and temperature controls. This saves energy for its owners, a nonprofit foundation, and saves kilowatt hours for Seattle City Light. We'll be taking a look around during this issue of NTV. But first, there's an update on water conditions. All those April showers improve the reservoir outlook somewhat for Seattle City Light. But that doesn't make up for the rain that could have come earlier in the year. It does mean the upcoming summer may not be as critical to our power systems as anticipated. Our new rate increase took effect May 1st and includes a surcharge. Based upon developing water conditions, the continuing need for a surcharge will be determined. Spring brought another round of all-employee forums to City Light locations. The superintendent and executive team shared corporate goals for City Light with employees. They are financial, maintain low competitive rates, customer satisfaction, increase survey quarterly, safety, reduce injuries and illnesses, employee satisfaction, improve communication, favorable survey results. A permanent deputy superintendent for a retail branch was also announced in April. Barbara Harvey Brayton comes from Memphis Light, Gas and Water and has bachelor's and master's degrees in civil engineering. She'll be joining the utility on June 1st. Here at the museum, you can trace the path of aviation history. And City Light is on a path of continuous improvement. Part of that involves changing the utility. Communicating change is one of the reasons we bring you NTV. Our next edition will be entirely devoted to why City Light must change. The change process that is taking place will continually look at how we do business and position the utility for the future. Anytime things change in organizations, our jobs, or our personal lives can cause tension and stress. Although stress is a fact of life in the 1990s, there is a resource to help us deal with the ups and downs of a changing environment. It's called the Employee Assistance Program, or EAP. And it's just a phone call away. Trained professionals are available to help us talk our feelings. We asked Sharon Atkins of the Employee Assistance Program for some constructive ways to help us respond to stress. Ways is first is taking care of the physical body, um, getting a proper amount of rest. It's also important that um, we exercise that helps us to take our minds off of the day-to-day -day routines and alleviate um, some of that stress. Um, mentally, we can, um, again, use the employee assistance program and being able to talk with someone that can listen to you and then that's going to be able to help you in a positive way as opposed to maybe someone that's going to help you stay bogged down in the situation that you're currently in. Um, it's good to exercise your um, sense of humor, do things that are fun for you, um, something that's going to, to make you laugh. Um, doing um, things that you're strong in, you know, exercising the, the strong areas of your life as opposed to those things that you might not be as comfortable in. The service can help you, even if you've never considered using it before. You can use it for the simplest things that are happening in your life as well as possibly major things. Um, it could be going through what you're going through here with the city. It could be a work issue. It could be some family issues of just, um, you know, a child comes home and says, I'm having some difficulty at school with my teacher. Being aware of the concern these times can cause, our employee services have set up a series of brown bag lunches on managing stress. The dates are Wednesday, May 19th, in the City Light Building, Thursday, June 3rd, North Service Center, and Thursday, June 17th, South Service Center. Call 684-3880 for more information and watch for an upcoming all-employee memo. We've talked about space considerations and planned moves before on NTV, and we'd like to show you where some of our staff are now based. South Customer Engineering Distribution design and field customer service employees are settling into this building at Lander Square, near the First Avenue Sears store between 1st and 3rd on Lander Street. And just a stone's throw from the North Service Center on Stone Avenue North is the new North Annex, housing North Field Services staff, customer engineering, and distribution design. 
updates on who's where around the utility will be a regular part of our NTV coverage as we help you keep up to speed in a workplace that continues to change. You know, everyone likes to be recognized. And one of the concerns that surfaced in the employee survey was attention to employee recognition. A promotion party was held April 22nd to congratulate employees who were promoted during the first quarter of 1993. Mary McGow of the Wholesale Branch coordinated the effort. Currently, this is done in other city departments, and an employee thought this would be a fabulous way to recognize a lot of the hard work that goes into promotions. Um, many times people go to school or have worked out of class or taken a lot of effort to get that promotion. And as a part of the employee survey, the department would like to recognize people. We heard that people are not receiving um, recognition, and we thought this would be a great way for management to recognize employees and their continuous endeavors to improve themselves and to promote up through the utility. Supervisors told success stories about staff members who were stepping up, and the superintendent was on hand to offer congratulations. Um, this has been one of the biggest events. We've been just pleased that William got this promotion. Another show of appreciation is sprouting up on bulletin boards in City Light locations. This wall of fame is on the sixth floor of the City Light building. Additional walls of fame show off customer compliments to City Light workers. They are located at all major City Light facilities. If you get a letter you'd like to share or know of one someone else received, send it to Joan Bullock, room 809, City Light Building. You know, Terry, even though this is a relatively new building, there are still energy improvements to be made. The museum has taken advantage of help to replace lighting in several areas. They're considering the addition of variable speed drives to reduce load on motors that circulate air for heating and cooling. There's 12 different fan systems which operate, which push the air around to heat and cool the building. And those fans don't, do not need to be operating at 100% of the flow, usually. So if you put on a variable frequency drive, and for instance, if you can lower the flow by 50%, with a variable frequency drive, you'll only be using 15% of the energy to drive that. And that's, that's a, if you've got, say, a 25 horsepower motor operating at 15% of the power, it's a lot of energy to save. This building is designed to take advantage of natural light, no matter what the weather. And the changing weather in the Northwest is a sure sign that spring is here. And summer's not far behind. The city's summer color is growing here at the city greenhouse near the Jefferson Park golf course. About a thousand of these plants are bound for city light substations and planting areas. Others will be seen around Westlake Mall, the Seattle Center, and Freeway Park. Spring brings Earth Day, Spring Clean, and other celebrations to preserve the environment. One of these was a potting party for Tremendous Seattle a public-private partnership for tree replacement. It involves city light and community groups, and the goal is to plant half a million trees in the next 10 years. Many of the trees are destined for spots under power lines, and planting the right tree in the right place is something Seattle City Light has a real stake in. Customer Blair Henry is chair of Tremendous Seattle. He works with Ben Barnes of City Light's Vegetation Management and coordinates private sector help. City Light has a tremendous number of trees under the power lines and so on, and we know that those trees are going to need to be replaced. You know, they die or get too large, and so what we're committed to is planting hundreds of thousands of smaller trees, the ones that will be perfect for under those power lines so that there aren't problems down the road. Ben says this is an important part of our power line clearance program. It, it, it's a real uh, breath of fresh air for, for, for City Light. Uh, it's been very hard for us to over the years to explain to people about planting the right tree in the right place because most people at the utility think all that we do is provide electricity and deal with poles and wires. And we at City Light have a, a much larger impact on the environment than just trees and wires, uh, both with trees, uh, with wildlife, uh, the characters of different communities and cities we serve. And with this, we've got dirt, certain species that can be planted, which enhances the aesthetics and, and, and the quality of life uh, in our communities that we serve. 
Seedlings come from the National Tree Trust, and volunteer groups donate time as part of their community service. There are other tree banks at New Halem, Diablo, and Concrete, and the trees help fight pollution and preserve Seattle as the Emerald City. Well, that wraps up this edition of NTV. Don't forget, we're interested in your story ideas. And all of our previous tapes are available for you to borrow. Give us a call at 684-3112 with a story idea or to request a tape. From the Museum of Flight, I'm Terry Kakita. And I'm Sharon Bennett for NTV Network on Television.